Hello, good morning, Harvest family. Happy Tune In Tuesday. You are tuning in with me, uh, Kelly Bush, today on this wonderful Tuesday morning. Um, yeah, so I have been praying and asking the Holy Spirit about what to share with you today. And what I have to share is not Christmas themed. I know, I'm so sorry. Everybody else has done so wonderfully keeping up with the Christmas theme, um, but I'm sorry. I just feel like the Lord wants me to share something with you today, and it is not a Christmas theme. So please forgive me for being rebellious and not keeping with the theme, but I do have something I want to share with you today. So the scripture that I want to share is Psalm 119. Verse 11, and the scripture says, For I have hid your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Have you hidden God's word in your heart? And do you continuously hide God's word in your heart? Um, to me, hiding God's word in your heart means that you read it, you meditate on it you memorize scriptures like so when it's inside of you you believe what god's word says about or you believe what god's word says is true and you have it inside of you um so have you hidden god's word in your heart and are you continually hiding god's word in your heart um i had a conversation with a person a couple of months ago and it has really just impacted me and I can't get the conversation out of my head and I feel like the Lord want me to share the conversation that I had with you all and the lessons that I took away from this conversation. So I had a conversation with someone and to give you some context, this person is a born again Bible-believing Christian, um, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, has faithfully attended church every Sunday, um, went Wednesday evenings for probably over 40 years or so, um, always attending church whenever the church was open. Um, this person states that they uh, faithfully read their Bible, they watch podcasts. So this is a seasoned believer, right? And so the person came to me and we were talking and the person had um, has a daughter and the daughter has unfortunately backslidden and has fallen away from the Lord, um, has some church hurt and other hurts in life and... Um, she has turned to some new age practices with healing crystals and unfortunately has opened up her her heart to believing lies that the enemy has um, has told her and she's believed those lies and so she was um, this person was telling me about a conversation that she had with her daughter and the daughter was just so sadly just talking um, and sharing some things about the Bible and how the Bible isn't, you can't fully believe the Bible and just some other, just lies from the enemy. And the, the lady I was talking to, she was so distraught, not just because of her daughter's believing these obvious lies and is heartbroken about it, um, but she really didn't know what to say to her daughter. And so, you know, I let her say what she was saying and, and then I gave her some advice and I said, okay, well, if it was me in that situation, um, did you retort back with scripture? Like when she said, oh, you can't believe what the Bible says because the Bible is um, written by man. Well, we know that's a lie. Second Timothy tells us for all scripture is God breathed and used for the correcting and rebuking the teaching of scripture and that God's scripture is alive and active, is sharper than two-edged sword. And, you know, some other scriptures that I shared with her. And I said, well, 
did you think about those scriptures to to kind of like retort? Because we know that from Jesus's example, that when Jesus was in the wilderness and the enemy came to tempt him, the that Jesus was saying, "Okay, no, <laughs> get away from me, Satan, for it is written and it would speak scripture." So whenever the enemy comes or these lies or whatever, um, we say, "No, <laughs> no, devil." The Bible says, for it is written, and we retort back with scripture, right? At least that's what I have learned and what I do. And so I share this with her and she, and she's like, oh no, I, I had never heard those scriptures before. I didn't even know they existed. And so she wrote them down and some other stuff that the daughter has said. I'm like, well, these are the scriptures that came to my, my mind when she was saying these things and I shared those scriptures with her. And she's like, oh, I never heard those before. That's really good. And and she wrote it down and whatnot. And I, and I thought to myself, isn't that weird? Like, that's kind of odd that she didn't know these scriptures. To me, they're just very common. Like, everybody who has been in the church for a couple of years should know these things. And this woman has been attending church longer than I've ever been alive. So I'm like, oh, that's so weird to my, you know, I'm thinking that to myself. I didn't say that to her because that'd be rude. Um, and then she was telling me about when she goes to her daughter's house that um, in her daughter's bedroom, she she's a nurse. And so my daughter, <laughs> so the, the lady, she when she goes to her daughter's house to watch her grandchildren for her when she's working, um, said that when she goes to her daughter's bedroom, she just feels this really creepy feeling. And she's like, oh, I just, I don't like going into that room. Would I have to? She tries to help her daughter out and does her laundry. So when she goes in to put the laundry away, she says, I just get this really icky feeling. And she's like, I think it's because her healing crystals and some of that stuff she goes to the psychic is in there. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you, I said, you, you know that anything that not is God is of the enemy. So healing crystals we know are part of the new age movement and that is not of god that's witchcraft that's evil things so that makes sense so there's probably some type of demonic entity that's that's over there i said well you're a christian right you've been filled with the holy spirit so get that devil out of there when you're there and she's like oh no i i i don't know how to do that and i was so awestruck i'm like oh so then I shared with her that I said, well, in Luke 10, it says that God has given us the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and, and all powers um, of the enemy and not be harmed. I mean, Jesus tells us that we will do what he did and he casted out um, demonic spirits and, and devils that we're going to do that too. So if we believe what the Bible says, then we can cast out demons also. And so I told her, I said, well, when you go back over there, get that devil out of there. And um, it's like, oh, I, I, I just, I, I don't know how. So I'm like, okay. So then I shared with her um, what I would do and what I've done in the past and how to get rid of the enemy and cast out an evil spirit. Um, so, but then, and then towards the end, I ministered to her and I prayed with her and everything. And then when I got done with the conversation, I sat back and I prayed, I'm like, Lord, that's so baffling to me. This woman who has been a Christian who's attended church for so long to not know these scriptures. And then when there is a, um, a demonic attack, she had no idea what to do. And she, she um, attended a, like a Pentecostal um, spirit-filled church where they teach you those things. And so I'm like, Lord why, why is that? And I just, I couldn't get, I couldn't shake the feeling that it just seemed strange to me. Um, and I felt like Holy Spirit said, it's not enough to just attend church on a Sunday morning. You have to hide my word into your heart. And so I just was so struck and back by that. And the Lord taught me some other things but so I just wanted to share with you, church family, that it's not enough 
to just come to church on a Sunday morning. While it is good and it is a good start, we need to go to church. We need to be with other believers. The Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship with one another. Like we need each other. We have to attend church. We have to attend Bible study. We have to be around with other believers. But it doesn't stop there. We need to hide God's word in our heart. That means that we need to read the Bible. And not just read the Bible. Like, I don't know if anybody else is guilty. I know that I've been guilty of, um, I'm a task person. Um, so I like to go about my day and check, you know, my my list off and my tasks off. And, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to read the Bible today. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get my Bible app or I get my Bible out. I read the portion of scripture. I'm like, okay, done, check, done. And that's not good. I mean, it's good. Nothing will go void, but that's not studying scripture. That's just saying, okay, this is my duty of what I need to do. And I'm just doing it to check it off a list. And I'm so guilty of that. And I don't know if anybody else is too, but God wants us to study his word. He wants us to know the background, the culture, like what is God really saying? You, you can so misinterpret one scripture if you just read one scripture of an entire chapter and book of the bible it can be misinterpreted um and just like my my friend that i was talking with and her daughter um she has just heard scriptures and was told there's so many wolves in sheep's clothing um, pastor was just talking about that and how we need to know what god's word says so when these people come to put doubt inside of us, when the devil comes and whispers those lies to us, we can say, well, wait a second. No, that's not right because God's word says this. But if we don't know God's word, if we don't know what it says, if we don't know God's character, when these wolves come or when the enemy comes and tries to per, um cause doubt or just persuade us and just trying to get us away from the Lord and cause doubt and to come into our mind, we have to know what God's word says. So we are not astray. Um, and when the enemy comes, cause we know life is hard, right? Sometimes life can just be hard and we need to know what God's word says in fight. So just like when an enemy comes to whisper those lies to us or when you um, encounter some type of demonic activity, you can say, hey, no, stop, devil, in the name of Jesus, get out of here, for it is written. And so you can do battle. And when <clears throat> I remember Pastor Ron's sermon a while ago, and he was talking about the, the armor of God and what they all represent the sword of the spirit is God's word. And when we um, use our sword by speaking the word of God. So we have to know God's word. We have to know where to get it in order to speak it, in order to um, use our sword. It's so important, my friends. Fam, we need to hide God's word in our heart. It's not nearly just enough to go to church on a Sunday morning or tune into these daily podcasts and listen to this and then just go on about our day. We need to encounter Jesus. We have to spend time with God. We have to spend time in his word. We need to memorize scripture. Uh, when I was younger, I had got this book. Uh, it was like a topical book and um, it was from Joyce Myers and it had a bunch of different topics in it. And then scriptures about that topic. So like one was anger. And then when you're struggling with anger to, to, um, to, to speak out these verses. And it was like A through Z, a, a topical reference. So if you're going through something, you know where to, um, what scriptures to speak. And oh my goodness, I used to carry that around with me so often when I was struggling with something. Um, if you struggle, like I struggled with fear for so long. For so for most of my life, 
And when I was a teenager, I used to put up these um, poster boards and put scripture all over my room. So when I had an attack of the enemy, I could look at those, those posters and then speak those scriptures. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. If God is for me, who can be against me? And just all these different scriptures you put up. Um, so that is a good tool that I used. Um, now, of course, when I was a teenager, they didn't have smartphones. <laughs> I'm, I know I'm aging myself, but yeah, they didn't have, we had cell phones, but they were like this big brick and um, mine was a Nokia, like this big green brick. And so I could not search the internet with it. Uh, I could make phone calls and text message, <laughs> but that was it. But now with the advent of um, the internet, well, they had the internet back then, but it was different. Um, and our smartphones, if you're just struggling with something and you want to know what a scripture, you can look it up. Uh, we have a lot of Bibles have concordances and there's so many tools that we can use to look up scripture and start writing it down. Like I'm the type of person that when I need to memorize something, I, I have to write it down. So I would take those scriptures and I'd write it down. I post them. Even still now, if I'm struggling with something, I'll take post-its and I put them on my bathroom uh, mirror. And so I see those as a reminder and what to, to speak out loud and what to think and to renew, um, to renew my mind. I'm hiding God's word in my heart. So I want to encourage you, my family. I don't want you to be in that situation like um, that lady I spoke about. I don't want you to be in a situation and have no idea what to say. You don't know where to turn to. You don't know where to look. So my friends, I encourage you. As Psalm 1911 says, hide God's word in your heart. So when the day comes, you will not sin against God. Spend time with him. Learn his word. Study it. Memorize it. Even, I know today, look up a couple of scriptures you don't know and start memorizing them. Get them inside of you. It's so important. So important, my friends. So let me pray for you, and then we'll see who's on. So Lord, we thank you, and we praise you, Father God. We love you, and we thank you, Lord, for this um, devotional today and this reminder of how important your word is and how important it is to spend time in your presence and to hide your word into our hearts. Lord, I pray that you, as we go about our week, that you would remind us all the importance of your word and to point out and highlight scriptures to us that you want us to memorize and to hide inside of us. So Lord, we do not sin against you. Lord, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's see who's on with me today. Let's see. Good morning, Mar uh, Romero and Karen. Ivy, good morning. Good morning, Rose. I hope you have a great day in Jesus as well. Let's see. Kim, good morning. Oh, I love those verses. Amen. Tammy, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Ron and Marion. Janice, good morning. Eva, good morning. Let's see. Dolores, good morning. Good morning, Judy and Michelle. Albert, good morning. Yes, put on the full armor of God every day. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Kevin. Hey, Courtney. Good morning. All right. Well, good morning, friends. I'm so happy that you joined me today. Um, I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, and we will see you again tomorrow morning. <laughs>